Hi there, this is uh, Tiger Shark from the Model Makers subreddit. And um, recently I've been posting pictures of this. It's a uh, F-18 done in um, splinter camo. Um, it's a Top Gun aggressor, F-18. Um, and uh, some people were asking the technique I used and um, I promised them I'd make a video and share it with you guys. Um, just so you can see it's a technique. It's a very, very simple one. It's not rocket science. It's just a little bit fiddly to, to work with around the fuselage. But if you want to make an effect like this, the first thing you need to do is you need to take your um, instruction sheet and you need to scan it. And you scan it uh, and make sure that it's a one to one ratio. So when you print it out, after you scan it, you want to make sure that the dimensions are the same as the drawing in your, uh, in your sheet, on your instruction sheet. Um, the second thing you need to do is you need to get a ruler, okay? Uh, this is, I prefer to use metric, so if you don't understand metric, the principles are the same. Um, what you need to do is you need to, um, so for example, if I'm gonna be doing the top part of this splinter camo uh, sheet like this, I'm gonna take a surface like the, uh, the wing here, and I'm gonna measure one of the long edges of this. So this says to me it's about, 16 and a half millimeters or 6.5 centimeters. Okay, so just make a note of that. <clears throat> Write that down, 16 millimeters. And then what you need to do is measure the same edge on the, uh, on the decal sheet that you want, or the instruction sheet, sorry, the painting guide that you want to try and uh, uh, use as a paper mask. So here I'm measuring it. And I get something like, whew, I'm gonna say three, 3.8 centimeters. So 38 millimeters. Okay. So I'm gonna write that down too. I say 38 millimeters for the first one, and this one is not, no, this one is 60, sorry. It's not 16, 60, 65 millimeters. So my plane wing is 65, my sheet is 38 millimeters. Then what you need to do is you need to go to a really cool site I found on the internet. It's called uh, airplanesandrockets.com. And uh, I'll maybe put the URL in here at the same time. Um, and it has a really nice scale calculator. So in here, I put in a value of um, 38, just grab my keyboard, 38 millimeters, and I wanna go from 38 millimeters to 65 millimeters, which is the size of the actual model. And you can see it's calculated here for me that if I was to take this instruction sheet, I would need to blow it up by 171% in order for um, it to in order for me to really make it a mask out of it. So what I do is I take that scan, and I, I use Photoshop, but you could use whatever you want. I um, replicate the background layer so that there's a copy, and then I use the uh, edit and, mm, not edit, yeah, layer. Layer, no, not layer either. Um, okay, I gotta click on the right layer. Yeah, you gotta do edit transform scale and then a uh, dialog box comes up the top and I simply put in 171% there and that blows up the image 171%. The reason I use Photoshop is because I can then move the image around because um, in many programs when you just blow it up 171%, it's going to not show you um, maybe the area that you want, but when I duplicate the layer in Photoshop, then I'm able to move it around so I know that what the print area is gonna look like. Um, so then once you've done that step, um, you simply print it out. And when you print it out, you get a largish type diagram like the one you see here. So I've printed this one out so that I can um, paint now the inside port vertical stab and the inside starboard vertical stab, right? I'm about to get generate decals for that. Um, and uh, once you have this sheet, then it's simply a matter of getting putting it on the sheet, putting on a cutting mat, sorry, using a hobby knife and, and a steel ruler and cutting out the pattern. So for the dark blue on the jet, I start by um, 
I started by painting the whole thing the lighter blue and then I cut out this part here of the stencil, put this on one side of the wing, put that on the other side of the wing, held it together with wonderful Tamiya uh, low tack masking tape. I would uh, tape around the edges of the paper. And also when I'm airbrushing, I'm using um, some latex gloves or um, uh, nitric, nitrile gloves. Uh, and um, I'm, as I'm spraying, sometimes I'm just holding the surface, I'm holding the surface down as I'm spraying so that uh, there's a relatively sharp edge. Uh, around this fuselage, it gets really tricky um, because the paper obviously and the way that it's drawn doesn't take into account the curvature of the fuselage. Um, I ended up like having to make the mask and sometimes it might fall a little bit short of where it joins on the wing. So I would um, just do what I could and then join up the other parts with masking tape. So there might've been a gap here, for example. I would just uh, leave that gap, but later on I would mask it off and then fill it in with the, with the rest of the color. And because of the curvature of the, of the um, fuselage, it's difficult to, uh, to get a really sharp line. It is gonna be a little bit, it, it will be a little bit fuzzier than the rest of, um, rest of the model. And you can see here, I got a bit of overspray that I need to fix up later on. Um, but um, I tend to also hold it down with my gloved fingers um, as I'm spraying as well. In this case, I kind of held it down like this as I was spraying the, uh, the, the dark blue color there. Um, so look, I'm, I am by no means an advanced modeler. I have only just gotten back into this after a while, um, a long while break. Um, this is the first time I've used this technique to do such thing. I'm really pleased with how uh, it's turning out and the results look fantastic. Um, it's so much better than having to go and, um, for example, mask this all yourself with sticky tape, uh, with masking tape, um, trying to go off the guide. I mean, it's very simple to cut out something, put it there. The paper holds up really well as long as you keep the um, airbrushing coats light. Um, and, you know, it doesn't always look absolutely perfect on the sides. I mean, you work off the top guide here, and as you're painting, um, you know, you, you wrap things around the fuselage. Sometimes when you look at this, it won't match the um, side exactly. So if I'll just give you an example. Uh, and maybe turn it up the right way. <clears throat> you can see uh, in this diagram, uh, look at the dark part here and this part here. You can see there's a little flick up there. So whilst it's pretty close, it's not gonna be exact. So I'm missing the kind of the little flick and you can see I've got a bit of an exaggerated curve um, on the right hand side. And on this one, yeah, I'm missing that kind of, uh, uh, like kind of hook that comes out. Um, so, you know, I work from the top. I, I figure this is probably okay because most people when they observe the model, when they look at the model and admire it, they're gonna be admiring it from like a top-down view anyway. So I'm more concerned about getting um, this top view looking like exactly like it does on the sheet rather than getting the, the side view looking exactly like it. Um, uh, but there you have it, there's my technique. So it, it's simply just a matter of scanning something, blowing it up, uh, using a sharp hobby knife and a steel ruler to cut out a, uh, a mask, a paper mask, attach the paper mask to the areas that you wanna spray paint. Um, and just like any other sort of uh, painting, it's all about um, thinking about how you're going to solve the painting problem, right? Which mask you're going to use first. Um, you end up uh, at least printing this out twice, once for the dark color and once for the, uh, for the light grays that you see there. Um, but, uh, but yeah, that's basically it. Uh, any questions? Leave them in the, uh, the post that I make on Reddit. And um, thanks for watching, I guess.